Hello, my name is Dr. Jennifer Willett and I'm an Associate Professor in the School of Creative Arts at the University of Windsor and I'm here to give you an at-home workshop for Science Gallery Detroit. So I'm at home like a lot of you are, it's been a long go, uh, and uh, I want to think about ways that we can engage with bioart, with art and biotechnology, with laboratory practices while we are stuck at home. So the first thing that I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about my outfit. Uh, this is an, a bioart project that, or a, a, an art project that I've been working on while I'm here in isolation. It's called the COVID Suit. Although I have to say I've been calling it COVID Suit Mom, and that might stay. Let's check it out. So the COVID suit is a hazmat suit that I happen to have in my basement because I am a bio artist. I carry some gear like that in my home. And I pulled it out during the height of the lockdown up here in Canada. Uh, and I started drawing on it. And I drew the molecular patterns and the virus, uh, the COVID-19 virus, and um, on it. And then I started taping to it reflective shapes, decorative stickers. It becomes very bespoke. It's beautiful. It's a little crafty, a little entertaining during lockdown. Uh, and it is also um, maybe a metaphor for how we imagine um, the virus is sort of like clinging to us when we're out in outside spaces. So for me, it's also like a physical manifestation of the anxiety that I have when I go outside. Uh, and so I've worn this suit all over. I've worn it all about town, worn it grocery shopping, making a video and doing some photography pieces, which I'll show you later. Uh, people do think I'm a little nuts. They might not be wrong but I like it. It's fun. It's an artistic and creative way to engage in this very strange time that we're living in. So the COVID suit mom has been getting busy at home with her kids. Uh, I was on lockdown with twin five-year-olds for a good five or six months. Luckily they're back in school now, but we're looking at another lockdown, I'm absolutely sure. So during that time, uh, we spent an enormous amount of time playing. Uh, and we played with their little people houses a lot. And then we started building imaginary houses for their little people. This is a, a rabbit, this is the Easter Bunny's home. Okay, and you can see it's underground, so there's a little slide for the Easter Bunny to get into there. And during that type of play, I got thinking about how that type of play, about making these little paper theater houses or uh, diorama houses, like we used to all make when we were kids in shoe boxes, um, could be a way for me to engage with my lab. Because not only am I a mom, but I direct a research organization at the University of Windsor. It's called Incubator Art Lab. And we have two beautiful laboratory art spaces. One is a BSL level two laboratory, uh, which this lab is based on. And the other one is a studio and BSL level one community engagement space. So it's very strange for me while I'm at home, in my kitchen, in my bedroom, trying to run an international art career and a research lab out of these domestic spaces. I, I miss those spaces and I miss wearing blouses, for example. So one of the things that we did with my research group this fall is we started to design a paper theater um, or a diorama of the lab itself. So this is a maquette of the real laboratory that we have at the University of Windsor. Now I have to say the facade is imaginary. I have a big imagination, but the interior is fairly correct and accurate in its design. We do have a chandelier in our lab. So today in this workshop, you're going to learn how to build your own paper theater laboratory. And we're going to talk about how to use that space as a performance space or as a workshop space to perform different bio art um, performances from at home. Then we're gonna encourage you to document those performances in either photo or video form and send them to us. You can either upload them to social media with hashtag incubator art lab, or you can email them to us at, I think it's incubator art admin at uwindsor.ca, but I will get you the appropriate address. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so I just want to give you a brief presentation 
on this project, the COVID Suit Stay at Home Paper Laboratory Project. So we have a beautiful lab at the University of Windsor. It's a biosafety level two bioart laboratory. It's in the front atrium of the university so that when you walk in through the front doors, you can see through these beautiful glass windows right into the lab. The lab is a research space. It is a teaching space. We also teach classes in there, but it's also a performance space or a public venue. So we can do biological artworks and display them in the windows so that the general public can see them without them having to leave the lab. We can also do live music events, theatrical shows. <clears throat> I'm thinking about things like bioart opera. So this becomes a space where science can also become a performative activity or task. So the lab has been open since 2018, and our research now is intrinsically tied to these facilities. So it's been very strange not being able to go in there during the COVID-19 pandemic. The type of work that we do is called bioart. And bioart is art that uses living biology or biotechnology as the media for the production of art. Uh, so this would be a great example of bioart. These are petri dishes filled with microbes that are growing on fabric and leather. This piece, also called Biotechnology as a Technology of Love, is very indicative of the type of research we do in our lab. Our lab is focused on, on researching interspecies relationships within the laboratory. How do the humans and the non-humans, how do the research organisms, plants, algae, uh, bacteria, but also maybe like um, organisms that come in on the bottom of your shoe, how do all of these organisms together collaborate to, to produce scientific or bioart research? So we're thinking about what type of love can be afforded to one another and across species within this space. So I just want to show you another, a few other projects. This is called Baroque Biology. Again, it's another piece where we're using bacteria, except this is GMO bacteria, genetically modified bacteria in petri dishes to create these beautiful images. This is another piece called um, algae spiral. And so in, within these tubes and in these containers are live colonies of spirulina algae. So I just want you to get in your mind how artists might collaborate with other organisms towards the production of art. So since lockdown, I've been doing a lot of COVID-inspired projects. On the top left here is a project I did in collaboration with Dominica Mediati, uh, and it's called um, Calling All Untethered Organisms. And it's a video where we imagine what it's like to be a virus floating through the air, waiting for a human host. Uh, maybe how we might be feeling right now, waiting for something to happen. Uh, here's the beginning of the COVID suit drawing. And here's another piece I'm doing where we're making these gas masks that also have COVID-19 patterns on them. Uh, and then this is the piece that you see me in the suit in this performance. It's called the COVID suit. I like to call this character COVID suit mom. And again, it's exploring the sort of like tension and anxiety that arises being out in public while during a pandemic, but also the tension that arises when sort of trying to raise children during this very contentious time, simultaneously being locked in with them, but fearful of letting them go too far away from you. So this is my research group. It's the Incubator Art Lab Research Group. Uh, normally we meet in person and work in the lab, but right now we're just really restricted to Zoom meetings. So we're trying to have a lot of fun during these meetings uh, and we're trying to conduct research. So what we came up with is we decided to build a paper puppet theater that is a replica of the laboratory space that will allow us to do domestic engagements, bioart performances in a virtual laboratory. So what you have available here on the Science Gallery Detroit website is a template document. And that is the document that you need to print on the harder cardstock, because uh, that will build the paper theater. Then you also have the assembly instructions, and those can be printed on regular paper. I have more information about that coming up. This is what the paper theater should look like in the end. Okay, so this is what you're aiming for. This one was built by Ashley Hemmings. Uh, and then all the students did different bioart project engagements with their paper theaters. These are early templates. So in the top left here, I have Ashley Hemmings. She lit hers on fire. On the top right, I have Hadia Nadim, and she made uh, agar, glow in the dark agar, out of um, uh, jello and then grew bacteria on it. And then she uh, did a UV light installation in her lab. 
on the bottom left here is Dominica Mediati, and she'd already been working on growing um, fungal cart cultures in her home. So she put one of the cultures inside of there, also allowed some shadows to play off of her lab. And on um, the far bottom right is Nate Talbot, and he made this really beautiful but untasty salad that involves oranges and gold leaf and onions uh, all in the same space. One of our researchers, uh, Billy McLaughlin, who by the way, I should say, designed the template for the paper theater, she can build anything, uh, collaborated with her kids and did a whole bunch of outputs with different paper theaters. We're gonna make them all available on our website if you wanna check them out. But this is my favorite one. They put peanut butter on their, one of their theaters and let their dog lick it out. I thought it was a really great video. So there's a variety of other videos from Billy McLaughlin and her family online. Please check it out. So what I'd like to say is watch uh, some more of the video. You're going to learn how to build your own paper theater. Uh, you can find more information on our website at incubatorartlab.com backslash paper theater lab. Uh, when you have your final videos or photos of your own laboratory inventions, please email them to us at incubatorartlabadmin at uwindsor.ca or and or upload them to uh, social media with hashtag at incubatorartlab. Thank you. Okay, so let's collect a few things so you can get started. So in order to make your own paper theater and your own bioart performance within that space, you're going to need some materials. First of all, you're going to need cardstock paper. We've made the design of this lab to fit on eight and a half by 11 cardstock paper because we thought most of you would have access to a printer at home or you could use a printer at a commercial print shop to print the plans um, onto cardstock paper. Now cardstock paper is just a heavier paper. It's often used by kids for drawing on. So when you go to the store, you might want to see if you can find that. If you cannot find cardstock or you don't have access to it, you can print the plans onto regular paper and then use a glue stick to glue those onto cereal boxes. And then you can follow the regular instructions. I would let the glue stick dry overnight uh, and I'd also give yourself some extra time. It's more finicky if you use the um, cereal boxes as a way to make your paper theater firm. If you try to build it with just regular paper, it'll be very soft and it will slump, but that might be part of your project. That would be fine. You're also going to need access to scissors and an X-Acto knife. Now I'd like to say you can do it with scissors alone, but it's much more difficult. There's some internal cuts and small fitting puzzle pieces that work better with an X-Acto blade. So if you have one, that would be great. Uh, we use a cutting board. Uh, this is just like a, for crafting, but you can also use a cutting board from your kitchen uh, or just make sure you don't cut directly on your table. Um, the other thing, the last thing I would say that you really need is tape. A lot of the pieces fit together without tape, but I find tape is excellent for reinforcing the shape of the lab. So I would highly recommend some scotch tape, but you could also use masking tape or otherwise. Then other things you want to collect is uh, living biological uh, organisms that could go into your lab um, or thereof. So I've collected a few things in my example. I've got some jello cups with fruit in the bottom. I've got an apple, celery, eggs, could get saucy. Uh, the other thing I have is zooplankton. Zooplankton is something that a lot of people use in aquariums, I think, to feed stuff. Uh, this is like sort of microorganisms from marine environments, but I just keep zooplankton around because it's cool to look at under the microscope. You may not have access to this, but think about what do you have in your home? Do you have ice cream? Do you have a cat? Uh, what are the types of organisms that you share your home with? that you might want to share with your lab. So what I'm gonna ask you to do now is to stop this video. I want you to collect all the items that you need together, and I want you to work on assembling the paper laboratory. I wanna give you a hint, it takes a little time. Uh, our team uh, averaged from an hour and a half to about two and a half hours to assemble it. We all took turns assembling it. It takes longer to assemble if you're gluing your pieces onto a cereal box than it does if you have cardstock printer paper. 
I should also mention that some of the cardstock paper gets caught in some printers. It works best with inkjet printers or with a laser jet printer that does not have as many components. The heavier duty laser jet printers sometimes do not like the cardstock. So I'd like you to stop the video, um, assemble your paper theater, and then come get back to us. Maybe later today, maybe tomorrow. Oh, before I go, I gotta get this off. I'm kind of, I'm getting roasting in here and I'm gonna be more comfortable working on my project wearing regular clothes. All right, let's get started, thanks. Okay, so presumably you have your lab built. This is the incubator art lab. You'll see here we have our workbenches, our lab equipment in the back, a beautiful chandelier, and this little side room here is the ante room where we have our microscopes and our sterile work environment. There is also an eye wash station here for emergency purposes. I've designed this beautiful paper theater facade uh, so that to give you like that sensation of a little puppet house or paper theater environment. And now I want you to start experimenting with ways of interacting it as a site for biowork performance. So my first example of something to try is to just do something as simple as putting an apple inside of your theater and lighting it from behind. Now, when you see that apple in there, it gives you this very strange sensation, something like Alice in Wonderland. Is the apple very, very large or is the lab very, very small? Another thing I was thinking about that would be really simple would be about putting other fruits and vegetables in this space, maybe celery. Let's see how that looks. Maybe I'll take the apple out. Then I'm thinking about things like, what about putting my hands in here and seeing how they interact in the space as well. <clears throat> Maybe it's a forest inside of your lab. This becomes sort of a metaphorical space where we can explore what can a lab look like? What can happen in a lab? Who belongs there? I have some other examples in mind as well. So I've been thinking about putting Petri dishes into the lab. Maybe like scientific equipment that's been modified. I've been thinking about putting other materials in these spaces, something maybe a little more goopy, frankly. So one of the things that I've been doing is collecting stuff that I wouldn't mind pouring in the top of the lab. So let's give that a go. First of all, I've got these jello cups that seem kind of like Really nice sculptures. Let's see if I can get it out. Here you go, Jello cup. There we go. Whoa. So I was thinking about what if I put Jello sculptures in the lab? Oh, that looks good. Um, one of the things I was thinking about doing—it's a little cold for this out—is maybe during the summer putting Jello or honey in there and then leaving them outside for the ants and bugs and critters to get into. And you could either do stop motion photography of that or you could do documentation of it a week or two later. Let's see if I can get another one of these jello cups out. Oh yeah, these are beautiful. And they smell really good. There we go. So those look like maybe characters in the lab. Oh yeah, those are nice. Uh, and then what about getting a little more haphazard with them? Like, that was a good one. That makes me want more jello cups. Let's get one more going. And then I'm thinking about 
something that'll interact with that aesthetically. about adding some contrast and some texture. These are pom-poms from a kid's crafting kit. And then I was thinking about some glitter. I may have to take some photo documentation of this. That's kind of lovely. Looks a little bit like a cake. Let's see if we can get a close-up in there. Maybe we'll put some more of this leafiness in there. today we're gonna crack an egg into the lab and put that in there and the last thing that I have to include today is my zooplankton and I think we should use the zooplankton liberally. Now zooplankton are microorganisms that grow in the water and they're also a beautiful color. So I think we should try painting them on. Oh, and they really stink. To the front of the lab. Try pouring them oh it's quite a smell so there you have it that is my Incubator Art Lab Paper Theater Bioart Performance. I look forward to seeing yours. Please take photos and video documentation of your own projects and upload them to hashtag Incubator Art Lab on social media, as well as email them to our address. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great time at home. Take care. Bye.